now I want to introduce the different types of uh, irradiants. We have uh, some here. Then we have uh, the surface of Earth. Let's place our solar module just flat on the ground and uh, with the irradiance of the sun. And now there are different types of, of irradiance we are um, observing. On the one hand, we have the direct irradiance. Direct irradiance, which is coming directly from the sun. Um, and on the other hand, there's the diffuse irradiation. So if we have clouds, uh, what's what's happening, of course, with the uh, radiation uh, on the one with the reflection at the top of the clouds. Uh, but of course, the sunlight can pass uh, through the clouds. Um, and this is the diffuse irradiance, uh, which means that uh, even if it's a very heavy cloudy day, um, it's getting bright um, in the morning. And uh, this is the diffuse radiation as the uh, sunlight can pass uh, even through heavy clouds. Uh, of course, uh, the direct irradiance has more power. Um, always, if you can, can see the sun directly, so if you have the direct view of the sun, then you have this uh, direct uh, radiation. What also occurs is a small part of reflected radiation. So what we also have is some reflection on the ground. Uh, so this uh, reflected radiation, reflected irradiance, comes from the albedo. So the ability of uh, the surface to reflect the sun, the brighter the surface is. So eyes, for example, has a larger Albedo than dark grounds like grass or woods. And this might also contribute to the irradiance which uh, uh, hits our solar modules. Um, so, what we can now differentiate, we have uh, on the one hand this uh, diffuse horizontal irradiance and related to the width. DHI. Um, this scattered uh, irradiance with no orientation, so there, there's no orientation of the uh, of uh, sunbeams. Then we have the DNI, this is the direct horizontal irradiance. This is this part here coming directly. Uh, from the sun, uh, there's one simplified equation to uh, calculate this direct horizontal irradiance in, in case of uh, no clouds. So if you have a uh, so-called clear sky day, no clouds, uh, and then this uh, DNI is uh, one. 0.353 kilowatts per square meter times 0.7 of uh, up to the air mass of and then 0.678 and we have defined the air mass is uh, 1 over sinus of gamma and uh, find gamma as this uh, <coughs> Elevation or zenith angle um, of uh, of the sun. So this equation here, uh, you can yeah, derive uh, the direct normal horizontal, uh, the, the direct horizontal irradiation uh, on a clear sky day without um, any clouds. And then finally, what we have is the global. Global horizontal irradiance GHI. So that's the 
uh, total irradiance from the sun on a horizontal surface on Earth, and it's the sum of the uh, diffuse horizontal irradiance and the direct one. Um, so the GHI is DHI plus the normal direct uh, direct horizontal irradiance. Um, times cosine of gamma. So what we have to uh, include is um, we have to correct this horizontal irradiance uh, with this uh, solar setting angle or elevation angle uh, we've, we've mentioned here. Next, we want to have a look at the situation. Uh, how does the irradiance look like under different uh, weather conditions? So what you can see here are uh, six different uh, situations and uh, different uh, dates. Uh, in this case, it's a system, a PV system, which has an orientation to the south, so 180 degrees. And the inclination angle is uh, 30 degrees, so it's not horizontal, but inclined. Uh, let's start with uh, the first diagram on the 2nd of July, on the upper left hand uh, corner. You see it's a clear sky day, it's an increase of the irradiance in the morning. After sunrise the maximum is reached at 1 p.m. so that's noon in, in summertime. Keep this in mind that this is uh, summertime. Uh, the maximum irradiance is uh, 1000 watts per square meter. And then in the afternoon the irradiance drops, so we're uh, getting closer to sunset and at uh, let's say 8 p.m. with Sunset. So that's the typical situation in summertime. Uh, the next diagram on the 22nd of January, same situation. We have a clear sky day, no clouds, but in winter time. So you see the slope of the curve is rather similar, uh, but the maximum value is just 600 watts per square meter compared to the 1000 watts per square meter we've had in summertime. This is due to the smaller um, elevation angle of the sun in winter time. The higher uh, air mass, uh, and of course, this results in a drop of the irradiance. Also, the width of the curve is even smaller. Uh, sunrise is later, sunset is earlier in this case, so we get uh, different total energy. The surface un be beneath this curve, of course, is the energy we can uh, connect from the sun. Next situation 28th of July, uh, again, summertime. You see a lot of ripples, maximum irradiance just. 500 watts per square meter, so um, cloudy day, no clear sky day, and uh, even in the afternoon you see just 200 watts per square meter, so heavy clouds, probably rain uh, in this situation. Then let's step forward to the next three uh, curves, so see here the 13th of June, uh, a lot of ripples, so this is uh, a day with a lot of uh, fluffy clouds, um, but you see the maximum irradiance reaches even 1000 watts per square meter and even more. Uh, so how does this occur? So let's move this and uh, take a look. What we have is we have the sun, we have the surface, now of course with our inclined system. Uh, and what we get is some of these fluffy clouds. And what now can occur is, on the one hand, of course, we have the direct radiation, but what we also have is a reflection of the radiation at the uh, border of the clouds. And this gives us a slight increase of uh, the power. You can see here that we can even reach larger irradiance uh, in the afternoon, although on a clear sky day without any clouds, there's just 500 or 600 watts per square meter. Uh, this can be increased due to this reflection at the surface. That's not the diffuse, but additional direct radiation. What we also have is here on the 11th of June, you see here again fluffy clouds uh, in summertime, and then a significant drop. So this drop here at 1 p.m., beginning at 1 p.m., this uh, represents a situation with heavy clouds, heavy rain, perhaps a thunderstorm, uh, and then in getting bright again, and uh, then cloudy day in the in the late afternoon. So this is, again, a typical slope. If, if we 
we have heavy clouds or fast changing weather conditions. Uh, we've also seen here on the left hand side on the 13th of June. And finally, the 28th of December, so uh, again, winter time, uh, you see the irradian, the irradiance just ripples below 100 volts per square meter. So it's really dark, a heavy, cloudy day, uh, no direct uh, sunlight. Uh, so this is just a small, very small amount of uh, energy we can, we can get. Finally, we'll have a look at uh, the situation what's happening if we have different orientations. We'll talk about this uh, later on in this course. What you see here in this diagram, uh, three different orientations of the uh, of the system. Here in blue, that's uh, orientation to the south, uh, the inclination angle. is uh, 30 degrees in all three cases so blue clear sky day um, and then in in green you see this is an eastern direction so uh, in this case the system is oriented to this or east so 90 degrees so 180 degrees and the orange curve is the western orientation uh, with a notation to 270 degrees so you see uh, three different slope of the curves you see here this clear sky day, the situation it's uh, in spring, so in March. Um, and you see here in the morning, the modules of the system oriented to the east has a faster rise of the irradiance. Of course, uh, it's uh, uh, oriented closer to the sun. Uh, and then we have the highest irradiance value at uh, 10 a.m. And then we have this drop as the move, sun moves. Uh, away from these eastern oriented uh, system and then on the other hand the western uh, oriented system you see here this very small value until even 9 a.m and then it's increasing uh, largest value in the afternoon at uh, 3 p.m or about 3 p.m with the irradiance of 700 volts per square meter um, so different situations and uh, that gives you a first idea or first view on the situation if you compare a system which has a southern orientation larger values but uh, even it, it makes sense if you have a system which has an orientation to the east and to the west so if this uh, roof of a house for example is an east-west orientation uh, it makes sense because the combination of the eastern and the western uh, curve gives you an interesting amount of energy which is comparable to the uh, orientation of the south.